Okay, we uh, got cut off a little bit abruptly last time because I forgot that I have to keep to 15 minutes. Uh, for the moment, at least, maybe we'll expand that later on. Uh, so, I want to talk about parts of speech. Okay, uh, some of them are very familiar to you. Things like nouns, verbs, adjectives, you should know uh, very well, I hope. Uh, you should also know pronouns, uh, prepositions. These are very common things. Uh, did I mention adverbs as well, which are obviously linked to, to adjectives? Uh, and the other ones that we're going to mention, uh, and you'll find all of these on the, the first worksheet, the first set of questions. Uh, there are also in English many determiners. We'll talk about those in a moment. There are conjunctions, and there is another class of words which is a little uh, different from the others, which we call interjections. Interjections are not normally used uh, as sort of integrated parts of sentences. Interjections are things like wow, yum, ugh, strange things like that, but which are standardized. Okay. Um, these, these things are more standardized than you realize. Uh, well, you, you may you see that when you go to different countries, if you speak different languages. Uh, so even something like an expression of pain, right? So in, in English, we say ow, or sometimes we say ouch, uh, whereas in Poland, you say ow, why, which is very strange for English people. Why would you say why on the end of this? But the point being that the you might think it's just a natural sound that you make, but actually it's it's a type of word. Okay, these things are different in different languages. Okay, so these are the the parts of speech. What we need to do, first of all, we need to introduce this uh, distinction that we make between them, which is a distinction of open classes and closed classes. So generally speaking, open classes are productive classes of words. These are the types of words which are being changed and invented and created all the time. Uh, so clearly whenever we create a new thing, okay, we need to name for it, so we need a new noun. When we have a new activity, we need a new name for it, so we have a new verb. Uh, and in recent years, of course, technology has given us many new verbs, many new nouns. Uh, since some other words are linked uh, to nouns, so these, these are these kind of, let's say, content words in language, so adjectives and by extension adverbs, as they're all kind of linked together, these are also productive. Perhaps adjectives not, not as productive, but, but still we can get new uh, adjectives and the use of them nowadays, especially through, through technology, the use of them can spread very quickly. There are other, uh, and by uh, extension from adjectives, obviously adverbs also. Once you have an adjective, you can make an adverb from it. The other classes of words are more uh, words which, which are used for grammatical purposes rather than content purposes. And words which are used in, in grammar tend to be much more fixed. So these are the ones which go into the closed class. Okay. So uh, things like prepositions, uh, in, on, at, okay? These types of words obviously don't change very much. Uh, and we have the same that people used hundreds of years ago. There may be very small changes in use for some of them. Um, as you can see in the, the different varieties of English, Right where in Britain we say at the weekend, Americans say on the weekend, uh, which shows you that, that there has been some divergence in, in the, the use of these words. Other words like conjunctions, so we're talking about things like and and but, again, uh, these words don't change very much, don't change very quickly. Determiners, determiners so one class of determiner uh, is articles. So the, a, an, these are determiners. Okay. Determiners are words which are always used, always used with nouns or noun phrases. 
So they determine which noun we're talking about. Okay, so are we talking about an apple or are we talking about the apple? Also, we might be talking about this apple or that apple, okay, or some apple, in which case that will also be a determiner. So pretty clearly, determiners don't change very much. These are, again, pretty fixed words, okay? What else have we got? Pronouns. So again, the pronouns, personal pronouns, uh, we know very well. I, you, things like that. Uh, but a pronoun is essentially any word which stands in for other nouns, or stands in for a noun. So when we say something like, I want that, that, in this sentence, is a pronoun. It's standing in for whatever the thing is that you want. Okay. So I've just said that that can be a determiner. I say that book, it's a determiner. When I say I want that, it's not a determiner, it's a pronoun. It's standing in the place of a noun. Okay, so that's a, an example straight away of how one word can be uh, two parts of speech. Um, okay, so we have to be careful with that. But again, these, these uh, so pronouns generally don't change very much. One other class of pronouns which is worth mentioning because people very often don't get this, this whole list of words like nothing, anything, something, uh, no one, someone, anyone, all of these words are considered pronouns. Okay, uh, They are universal pronouns and they, they don't, you know, they are used instead of referring to some particular thing, we, we just use these universal pronouns. Uh, we've also got things like each other, uh, and one another, which are considered reflexive pronouns. And there are more, okay, which we will look at as, as we look at examples, we will see more and more of them. Okay. Uh, what else haven't we mentioned? Um, oh, I mentioned something about conjunctions. Uh, conjunctions are able to bring together different parts uh, of the sentence. But it's also not, not just things like and, but also uh, a word like that, which I've already mentioned. Um, so when we say, I think that something, this that is a conjunction, right? So you have, I think, that's, that's one that could be a sentence on its own. And then you have that, and then you have something else to follow. So this is also a conjunction. So you can see that that can be a pronoun, can be a determiner, can be a conjunction, okay? All right, we need to also mention, so um, uh, prepositions. So prepositions, as I said, these, these are also words which don't change very much. I'll just say something about them. Uh, prepositions are words which are always used, again, always used to link a noun or a noun phrase to the rest of the sentence. Okay, so they're always followed by a noun. The slight problem you can get with that is that sometimes we don't actually say all the words in our sentence. Okay, so sometimes we will just miss out a word on the end because we think it's not necessary. Uh, but it's understood, right? So if we say uh, we put something in, so someone no, uh, says put something in the drawer and you say I've already put it in, then we can say, well, this, the drawer is, is somehow understood, even though we don't actually say it. Okay, so maybe we'll, we'll see some examples of that. So all of these words, uh, interjections, in, interjections are cultural things, which, which is difficult to introduce new ones, but not impossible. Uh, so interjections and conjunctions, pronouns, prepositions, determiners, th these are not words which really add content to the sentence. So these are more grammatical words or interjections or something slightly different. So these are closed class. However, it's important to remember that closed class doesn't mean that things don't change at all. Uh, so those of you who uh, know anything about slightly older English, anyone who's read any Shakespeare in English will know that uh, English used to have uh, 
a system of personal pronouns uh, similar to other languages, similar to, to French, similar to, to Polish, where there was a an informal you and a formal you. So in Shakespeare's time, uh, we had the word thou, which meant you in an informal way. So you had thou, thee, and thy. It's you, you, and your. Uh, as in the very famous line from Shakespeare's sonnet, shall I compare thee to a summer's day, thou art more lovely and more temperate. So there was a whole system of informal second person pronouns in English. This system has pretty much disappeared from general English over the last 400 years. Uh, there are maybe still in Yorkshire in England people who use this. Uh, but this is very, uh, very rare. But typical, typical, certainly educated English people or people who, who grew up maybe hearing this kind of thing will still use it. People who know poetry will still understand it, but they'll use it occasionally in a, in a sort of funny way. Um, but it's gone from normal English, right? So it's not impossible for changes to take place in closed class. Uh, parts of speech, it does happen. Uh, there are also some certain irregularities with that. So in, in America, they tend to have a, quite often they use a, a, a plural version of the second person pronoun. So they'll say, uh, in America, they say y'all, which is short form of you all, but it's, it's used as a pronoun. Um, and possibly in America, but certainly also in parts of the north of England, they'll put an S on the end of you. So this is very much in, in, in Liverpool, you can find this use also in Scotland, um, a use looking at me, right? So meaning meaning that there's more than one person. So there can be variations, which means that there can be change. And of course, in the open class parts of speech, uh, it's not a complete free for all. You can't just do anything you want just because it's open class, right? If if you use words which other people don't understand, then no one will understand you. Some words disappear. Some new words are created. Uh, as we need them, right? People don't need certain words for, I don't know, old uh, farm tools and things which none of us use anymore. So these words disappear from the language or they're, they're preserved in dictionaries sometimes, but we don't really use them, we don't know them, and we bring in new ones. But there has to be some regulation of this process, otherwise we'll all end up uh, speaking completely different languages, right? So literature, education, dictionaries, these things slow down to some extent, these changes, making it possible for us still to communicate with each other. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. And what I want you to do now is to take a look at the first set of questions, okay, where I'm just going to ask you to divide the parts of speech into open and closed classes. I've just told you how to do that, so that should be very simple, but I'll go through it again in a moment. Uh, and then I want you to have a look at the sentences and see for yourself whether you can work out the parts of speech. Okay, so I'd like you to do that take as long as you want. And then you will find that there is another video where I go through the answers. Okay. Uh, if you still don't understand anything, then send me a question, get in touch. Okay. So that, that will be that for the first lecture. Once we've gone through, uh, you've looked at those questions and then you've gone through the answers with me, uh, then, uh, Soon enough, I will put up another video, I suppose, of the second lecture. Okay, so until then, I'll say goodbye.